All right, Big Mang, it's the rundown from Chicago. It is Wednesday, it's September 14th. Uh, myself, White Sox, Dave, Chief, Carl, presented by Rocky Boots. Uh, go to rockyboots.com and enter the code RUNDOWN to check out for 25% off your next for your next pair of boots. Uh, for over 85 years, Rocky has been building the world's most rugged boots and apparel. From job site to the campfire, Rocky boots and clothing are built tough and comfortable, so you'll wear them everywhere. And now, Rocky is introducing work smart, rugged outdoor wear that is more comfortable than anything out there. Whether you're a working man or just like comfortable, manly clothes, try work smart and see how comfortable work wear can be. Rocky, rugged outdoor heritage since 1932. Uh, I think all four of us would have loved some Rocky boots wear uh, at the rainy Bears game on Sunday. Speak for yourself, Ed. While you are speaking for yourself, I'm going to speak for you. Okay. What does that mean? You're not rugged enough to wear Rocky boots. You don't. You're not on their level because I've worn them and they're that good. Okay. Would good they have, Would they have helped him in the downpour though? He would have left probably even earlier than he did. Okay. Are you discouraging the audience from? No, like I'm, saying, is, I'm there, saying. Yeah, it sounds like it. It doesn't. I'm saying that. Sounds like if guys like me can't wear them. Eddie's a soft ass motherfucker, he wants Rocky and boots he's to not be <laughs> inclusive. Hey, no, I'd, I don't. I'm saying that you you don't. You're not on. You're not good enough for them. That. So the rain was obviously a thing. The only time I ever get bothered by rain is when my socks are wet. And if I had Rocky boots, I would have had a much better experience trouncing through the parking lots uh, and, and getting up into Soldier Field because they would have kept your feet dry because they are the best boots. Dave and I have worn them out uh, to different hunting things with Sydney. They're fucking phenomenal. Winter is coming. It's right around the corner. Ugh. We're in the, the gross weather season. You're going to want to need them when you're shoveling out parking spots and everything like that. You need to have them. Rocky Boots, Rocky Boots, Rocky Boots. Go to RockyBoots.com, enter code RUNDOWN at checkout for 25% off your next pair of boots. All right, first topic here. Um, it sounds like that cheating fiasco with the Grandmaster Chess Tournament, I think that's what it's called, uh, may have been uh, a, a situation where someone was cheating using anal beads. Uh, that's a giggle from you. Yeah. The well, anal beads make you laugh. It's yeah. It's a preposterous. It's two <laughs> things that you would never expect to be in one headline. Is it s- just too preposterous as a whole, or is it so preposterous that it, he might have something? Remote-controlled anal beads. Now, where did your heads go when you first heard about this? Because I'll tell you where mine went. What a system. What a, what a system. A, you got to know. Actually, I have an answer to this, but go ahead. You got to know uh, the fucking, what is that, Morse code? Morse code. You got to know Morse code. You got to get the anal beads programmed. You got to have a strong connection, the amount of practice, and that guy's got to be in the room while, while you're practicing with the anal beads. Yeah, you got to get a lot of reps to, to if, if you are cheating that way, you have to have a lot of reps. Yeah, you have to be an expert on the sensations in your asshole while you're playing the most competitive <laughs> chess in the world. This guy maybe doesn't need the anal beads. Unless he does, which is Unless, why he yeah. went through all this. He's I mean, like, I, a lot I, of I know a, power there. Well, what was your thought then, Ed? Let's, I think that I'm about to go win the 2023 world series of poker with anal beads. Yeah. Oh, your ass. What is, is that, that now? Like 8 million. Yeah, it's a fucking big pot. Yeah, it's huge. Mm. I mean, think about it, though. Fucking give me one buzz if, it's, if I should play it, two buzzes if that's I should fold. That's a lot easier than chess because <laughs> yeah, it's I'm like saying. rook to knight's four or whatever. I don't yeah, know about the yeah, language yeah, yeah. of it. How that's like a lot of but different How do things. I know the cards on the table? Yeah, right? you, don't, you don't know I don't that. know the percentages. Someone's wa- – well, yeah, well, you're not true. watching it live, yeah, it's though. Not, yeah, 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 that's a good point. I didn't account for that. You were just all about – you're like so eager to just have an – You had an excuse to have vibrating anal beads. While gambling, and yeah, it was, just I was like, I'm, it. yeah, it was yeah. just that was gonna be my my Your strategy uh, excuse to enter you the foray into anal beads. Anyways, now, yeah, I might consider. Dave, you can you give me some pointers? Uh, I can't give you pointers. I've never had anal beads in my butt. <sighs> but to answer your original question, the first thing I thought of for some weird reason is in Jackass. I think it was Chris Pontius when he shoved the race car up his asshole in the condom and went and got an X-ray because his ass was hurting. <laughs> I don't know why that's the first thing that came to my head. And it but has nothing to do with the story, but question answers a question for you. Question though. So the people that are alive at mm-hmm. the poker events, you're telling me that it's not live for them at least. They're just sitting there watching people play faceless Without hands. Without seeing the cards? Yeah. 
That sounds like a brutal experience. Dude, can, but can you imagine the final table showdown? Yeah. You yeah. You're sitting. There's in the room no way. There's no way with that amount of I mean, money this, up for this, grabs. This strategy was born. Had to be born out of casino, right? When they were doing, they had the, the guys who the had the little thigh. vibrating yeah. things on the thigh about whether to yeah. like, fold or hit when they were playing blackjack, and they like smash his hand up with a hammer. Mm-hmm. What's the punishment for catching somebody with anal beats at the table? It's got to be bad. You can't be good. It's lay them down on their stomach and you pull it out in front of the whole crowd. Jesus. Public humiliation. Public humiliation. Public humiliation. This guy did. This guy was like, I'll play naked <laughs> when he was accused of cheating. I mean, oh, he said that? Yeah. Respect. Yep. Respect. Yep. <laughs> uh, crazy story, though. Very I mean, crazy. if you're Chess a chess communities, didn't see this one coming. No, did not. Uh, next thing here, there's more on the Elon Musk Twitter drama. Uh, the shareholders approved the $44 billion sale. And uh, Elon's still trying to back out. Apparently, there's a whole bunch of things. There's supposed to be a Chinese spy and an Indian spy in the con- in the company. Believe that. <laughs> Is India spying? Crazy. Us? I think everybody spies on everybody. Yeah. I would assume. And also, Twitter's head of security, Peter Zatko, testified to Congress saying Twitter is a cesspool of cybersecurity and privacy risks. Yeah, and he did that under oath. So you don't just say that to score points in like the media or whatever. Because the and result, you if you're prison. lying, yeah, it's perjury. You're going to fucking jail for lying to Congress. So if he says it, he means it, and he is an expert. I just, I got to say, like, I hate, you know, the, the Twitter board, you know, shareholders, executives, whatever. I love this move, though. You know, they initially, like, reject the bid, and then when their stock goes in the ticket, they're like, no, wait. That price that you gave us that was, like, 16 yeah, bucks above there. where we're trading, we'll take it. No take backs. <laughs> yeah. T- I would implore everybody interested in this topic to go read jerry thornton's article on it it breaks it down into layman's terms much better than either or all four of us can um what he had some analogy it was was perfect it's like he put it in a sports analogy i can't remember exactly what it was but it's like hey like we were going to offer this draft pick just making an even number five million dollars then we found out he had a torn rotator cuff and like "Ah, actually we're only going to offer this and then they're like he's like fuck no like i'm not doing that fuck this you already offered this like this maybe they should just go read it like you're saying yeah just go read it just go read it <laughs> i mean that was <laughs> yeah that was bad that was bad that's so fine you did, so d- for those keeping score at home we're about nine minutes in maybe eight you've uh, deterred people from buying rocky boots you've <laughs> let people know i Jerry's said that you're not good and then enough. you tried to sp- you tried to explain it all over again so uh, i said did. you are not good enough Let's for rocky keep the boots. twitter head of security was a hacker that they hired in 2020 correct also like casino so it's like catch me if you if you can abigail yeah. got hired by the mm-hmm. fbi mm-hmm. to like take him down this guy doesn't have a lot of like the corporate structure no. inherent like communication strategies where it's like, well, that's just the way it is in corporate America. This guy's a hacker. They hired him. They put him in charge of Twitter security. And he's just like, wait a second. You guys don't do any of this stuff. I think it's probably a little bit juicier than it sounds like the reality is like a lot of this shit like, oh, they violated a 2011 settlement with the Federal Trade Commission. Get in fucking line. The FTC is an executive federal agency that just impl- like. The, mm. uh, the amount of consumer protection facing agencies out there that are putting like restrictions in place and settlements, it's all fucking bullshit. So they can go hire Accenture and Deloitte and big consulting companies and, and fucking prop up these stupid third party arrangements. Everybody can get rich and suck each other's dick at the end of the day. So that that's the culture that they're in. This guy talking about this stuff, it just seems like a little bit of an outsider. This is hardball. It's but he's that. but he's he's not an outsider. He's an insider. He's an outsider from like corporate structure and and working and stuff. You like, know what? Yeah, bad stuff goes on everywhere, pal. True, everywhere. but they're they. I mean, this, they're one of the biggest Banks. platforms in the world. I gotta say, Insurance. there's something about just his nickname. His nickname is Mudge. I mean, I, yeah, like that, you that, guys that like, like like get Mudge on. Ooh, but <laughs> it's not. It's it's spelled way different. It's, it's, but it's also, like, isn't this his fault? Like, it wasn't this his job to? No, his job is to poke holes and uncover it and like and try to rectify it. Yeah. And then when yeah, they, and then the board doesn't want to do any of the shit he's talking right. about. And he's sitting there being like, well, you guys should have a bigger right. fucking responsibility. And the people are like, shut you, up, dude. We're you, all millionaires. Go back home. You want to know how you know you can trust him besides the perjury thing? They're trying to slander him. They're oh, trying yeah. to like they're, that guy who uncovered the uh, Harvey Weinstein thing. Um he put out a thing where like yeah there's like a lot of money changing hands being offered for dirt on mudge 
and no one's been able to find anything yet. So you know, squeaky clean. Yeah, you know, it's like they must be really worried when per uh, the they can't discredit him because he did it under the, under the threat of perjury. And then they're like, well, we better just tarnish his name. Yeah, as a whistleblower. So I like that. Yeah. So cesspool is a good legal word, though. There's no exact definition of cesspool. He can sit there and say there's a cesspool. You can't. You can't say hell. Yeah. Yeah, that's you true. You can't say that there's a Chinese undercover agent and then be wrong about that, though. That's pretty specific. Yeah. Yeah. At least one. Yeah. Yeah. Well. All right. Next topic here. Uh, mourners at the Queen will wait in line for 30 plus hours to see the Queen's coffin. There's going to be over 400,000 people in line. And uh, security has been told to be on the lookout for people suffering. Um, does anyone take this? Sure. I'll take it. <laughs> you couldn't pay me 30 <laughs> hours to wait in line for a uh, single fucking thing on this planet, especially the death of somebody. Yeah, I, I would agree. I don't care. I don't do lines. Yeah, lines, waiting. A single thing on this planet. Your family members. I don't think nope. if someone was like, you have, like, let's and I say, wouldn't want them waiting 30 hours to see my dead body. I then. love my mom. I don't know if I'm waiting in line for 30 hours to look at her coffin. I'll get pictures from someone else. Game seven, White Sox hosting World Series. Maybe. I That's don't, beyond family, though. I don't, see, I don't think I would, though. I don't, Al's Pizza, last day ever. <laughs> Maybe. But again, beyond family. So isn't the flight to Australia, like, close to that? It's like 24 mm. hours. I don't know if I would do, like, I think I might just cross Australia and New Zealand. They look awesome. I don't think I can do it. Mm -hmm. So That sure. is a long time. Mm. Carl? Yeah, I mean, I, I actually do kind of like the, the royal family. Yeah. You know, a lot of people like to shit on the royal family, and I get it. I'm not saying this as, like, a contrarian. I just think it's cool. Like, I think it's cool Buckingham Palace is there. It's big as fuck. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool that people, like, care about these people. I think it's cool there's like the prince and you know the fucking princesses and stuff i could do without the harry and Meghan Mar megan markle controversy I, I wish they tightened it up and just packaged up the royal family a little bit better i think they are going to do that i, I think, like it. i think that's what the king does he wants to like eliminate a lot of these people and you know the more people you have the higher the likelihood that you get a prince andrew in there so it's like you know what let's just make this circle a little tighter yeah, tighten it up cost more cost efficient and uh and you know more money for the people at the top so I've been impressed with the hearse. I didn't know uh, one of those existed with the glass. You oh, see that? I yeah, I saw that. It's a glass. Uh, you see, like the coffin in the back of the hearse. I watched a little bit of it. So that's why I don't think they just do a dug a drive by. Like I mean, I'm sure that a lot of people have, but they were saying the ceremony they did this morning has been around since like 1606 or something. Yeah, I'm shit. sure it's they're all walking down the street. All the fucking people from London are out, you know, taking pictures. Well, I mean, they weren't taking pictures in the 17th century, of course. Yeah, but yeah. That sentiment of like you got to go see the dead body. Mm -hmm. You know, I do respect it. Oh, yeah. a lot different than how we celebrate stuff in totally. our culture. 20 totally. hour, 20 hour flight to Sydney. So I was wrong. I thought it was more than that. But, but people are all about the like, fuck the crown. And these people are bad people and colonization and all that stuff. Uh, you know, obviously, historically, the crown is not anything to right. be admired. But in modern times, they yeah. should be applauded for how much they've grown since post Victorian era into into like a modern monarchy and symbol. And they're still effective to some some extent. Was the crown embellished with how much in political influence she had? Like, oh, I'll go sit down with Winston and tell him that we're behind him. Uh, you know, I mean, I'll they, go sit I think down they, with Martin. They Mar still you know, have like weekly meetings. I, I love think. that. You know, so but team. it's like I don't know. They're I, more figurehead. Yeah, exactly. It's just yeah. a nice yeah. thing. It's like, oh, that's it's nice. Tradition. We got this. Yeah. Show up. And it's for tourism. Like people say that too. Like they show up. Like we we have to because it brings Buckingham in palace. Yeah. Like my parents are there now. They're doing all that shit. Yeah, millions so, and millions of dollars. Yeah. A year. They're not waiting in line for thirty hours. Fuck I promise no. you that. But no. they are like going around to like see some sites. I'll say this. I mean, I don't pay attention to this garbage at all. But I kind of assumed based on how Americans are, we just fucking hate all our politicians unless you're one of the crazies that like. You, they're like a deity to you, mm -hmm. like on the far right and far left. But so I assume that was the same thing for not that they are politicians, they just they're more figurehead. But I assume that was the same thing for England. They're like distraught over this. Yeah, well, it's and a, I'm like, it's who a mix. Gives a fuck. Yeah, yeah of it's, course. It's I like know, regional I know. too. Right. Like I guess like people in Liverpool, Manchester, they don't really give a shit. People in Nottingham care a fucking lot. Uh, so, it, it, yeah yeah so <laughs> it's, uh, it's i wanted kinda, to jump down that but i yeah. saw you were getting internet oh bullied. it was so annoying and it's like the ricky gervais thing where it's like how arrogant are you that you can't see anything that offends you 
Like people have different opinions about the queen. It is what it is. I don't like. I don't know. I don't understand the fascination and like people being you know for queen and country. Like I just don't. I'll never understand that. But uh, people are upset. People are very, very, very upset. I mean, she was ninety six. It's a well lived life. People, old people die. Yep. Circle of life. Mm-hmm. You ever see the movie King Ralph, Ed? King no. Ralph. Yeah, John Goodman plays a, a distant heir. The entire royal family's wiped out. And, uh, they take a picture at the start of the movie, but there's like water on the ground and the electricity runs in, and just zaps and fucking vaporizes hmm. the Didn't entire royal family. Didn't you tell me some like aberration? So then they got to no. go back into the Australia. figure out like where does the genealogy trace, and it goes back, and it's a fucking Packers fan, John Goodman. That and then they go out to the United States. They bring him like, hey, you have to be the king oh, now. There, there is so a real guy in it's Australia great, who's like a, a farmer. Yeah, they're keeping him off. They're, yeah. they, they're stiff arming that right guy. but like there's some kind of i mean who knows they're all those roads kind of lean back to each other but he is like this guy who like was part of some family and ended up in australia but they're saying like he could have like a claim he's the rightful heir to the, th- the iron Theoret- theoretically i don't want a monarch i like that there's one out there and that it's like with our ally and stuff like i don't want one here but i just i do appreciate it. i think it's cool it's yeah. weird it's that cool. like because there's She's Spain fashionable. Spain still has a royal family. Denmark still has a royal family. Sweden does. But, like, w- the only ones anybody knows about, Greece, I think, might even have one. The only ones anybody knows about are, are the English ones. In other news, a uh, Taiwanese nursing home was forced to apologize after hiring strippers for their seniors in wheelchairs. Um, anybody have any problem with this, Dave? Did anybody die? Uh, I don't believe so. so what, what are we talking about? No. I, I, my problem is the forced apology because that's not an apology. What? Who are they apologizing to? Yeah, who are they apologizing yeah. like to? Like me? You think those, they're, they're, they're not apologizing to the seniors because I guarantee you the seniors were all like, fuck yeah. You know, people say like seniors are like fucking like crazy in those things. Uh, is that true? Like, I, isn't that hard to believe? No comment. What? I, I had a grandfather who was a, a bad boy like confirmed Re- yes okay Re- reports Rep- okay yeah all right do yeah. you know what i mean though like you always yeah, hear no, like I, they're i know what you mean yeah i mean it's like a college dorm for like senior citizens i'm sure they are fucking like rabbits in this yeah like you ever been to one of those it's just it's silence with beep and it's beep like it's just like you know what i mean it's I, so bad i kind of had this vision of it like the toy story toys like as soon as like the all the younger people oh, yeah, like yeah. The, the door shut and it's after hours or whatever, then that place lights up. Yeah, and I can see that. Yeah, I worked at one. That was my first job. Oof. Bridge crossing. So or what? I was called Alden in Des Plaines. Mm-hmm. Two, both yeah. of my grandfathers spent significant time in nursing homes. My my mom's dad was like more or less a vegetable for a long time, and I we would go there all the time. And I still have like I can smell it. Like I, I know the exact I smell. It. It's like this yeah, very, little newspaperish. Like cleaning products, yeah. it's it's bad. Yeah. If now that we are advancing in age, if I ever get to the point where you guys think about putting me in a home, just fucking put a bullet in my brain. Why? Why, why would I, why would be, I be in charge of that? that? <laughs> That's just such a glimpse into like your brain and our relationships. <laughs> if you're going into a home, dude, call anybody but me. If you're in any medical condition where you need help, call anybody but me. I think he's probably calling me. (laughs) Um, It'd probably be Chief. Is Chief listed on your life insurance? Is he the Uh, benefactor to your life insurance? And my dad would probably try to take me out. Is he the heir to Ace? Uh, Nah, my brother would take Ace. Uh, My dad's the heir to my, like, $18,000 net worth. And that's including, like, my car, this laptop. That's what my network. Company, company owns issue. that laptop. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I could probably hawk it. Seventeen dollars. You're having a bang yeah. up job today, Dave. I love it. <laughs> um, last topic here is two crazy fight videos. The first one was at a high school football game. Fans, do not jump into this. Fans, do not jump into this crowd. Security, you're in. The second one was at a bar in Providence, Rhode Island. Are fights better or worse today than they used to be now because there's, do you think people are more 
I'm going to put on a show, the fucking cameras are out? Or do you think it's like Excellent you see the question. cameras out and like I'm a little bit more hesitant? I see like the, the football fight reminded me of like fight videos from 10, 12 years ago where people, they didn't know how to hold the camera the right way. This thing was horizontal. It was the wrong way. It was just like, this is like an old school throwback fight video. I'll just say that I am glad we're back to seeing fight videos at bars and restaurants and not just in airports. Mm -hmm. We went through a COVID yeah, made every single one was in an airport or, or on a plane. And now it's like it's nice to see people throwing chairs again. We it was a roadhouse that. ass fight too. Oh, like big fucking time. just people getting yeah. thrown over tables. And yep, <laughs> it's already taken care of, and it's no longer in the hands of the legal system. But I have a very close personal friend that he he begged. I didn't say anything on Twitter or anything. He didn't even beg me, but he told me not to publicize it. But he got dragged off an airport or an airplane and arrested for not wearing his mask i think i could probably guess who it was you couldn't you don't know okay he you could you could definitely i'll think about it you'll think about it and the mugshot's hilarious it's and i can just see him on that plane just lo like he's not like some fucking anti-mask or anything like that either it's just like he was at wit's end yeah well thanks i mean the high school football fight, you know, if it's like, oh, you, if you knew that was brewing on, like, Wednesday afternoon at school because of a bad Snapchat, and then, like, the shit's going on Thursday, it's like, yo, did you hear they're coming? Yo, we're going to – you know, my cousin's coming from Bridgeport. He's going to bring a couple buddies. Like, don't worry, shit. There, there, at least I, in my experience, there was some of that. It's not like every fucking week it was like, oh, we're going We down had one. But there would be mm -hmm. those big fights where it's like – Oh, did you hear about Timmy Burhans at St. Rita was calling out Scott Hayden at the lunch table? Dude, we go to completely different schools. What are we talking about? We still met at Friday night at Beverly. Never watched the two fight. The fu high school, that's saying the nostalgia behind that of going back to that, like, why are these guys fighting? I never understood what, football what, The fights. institutional yeah. of, like, let's go, man. Why? Just because you can't really do anything? They're wearing a helmet? Yeah, what are you just going to do? Break your hand? Would you be one of those people that runs out with their helmet off, just swinging their helmet? Like uh, Brandon Merriweather in Miami? <laughs> yeah. It was like he was assault with a deadly weapon. Yeah. It was the uh, defensive event on the Browns last year. What's his fucking Miles name? Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett. Yeah. He tried to. That would have fucking killed him. Yeah, but yeah. like the Brandon Merriweather one. Remember that? They were uh, playing like, it was like Miami against uh, FIU, yeah. and he yeah, yeah, was yeah. swinging around uh -huh. like a, what were those medieval like uh, uh, ball and chain, ball and yeah. chain thing, like William Wallace. So yeah, that that I would not be one of those it's guys. A, I would be strapped up tight. Like, it's you know. a tough situation too because it's all on film, and that's your yeah. high school, and uh, like you know. Do you break it up, but then you lose, like, people are like, what the fuck? You didn't get scrap, and you didn't get with the, the boys. The, or, the, what the do you funniest do? part of the video was the PA guy. I don't know if you guys had the sound on. The PA guy yeah. was like, we got a player down on 35-yard line. Security. <laughs> security. Everybody yeah. just break. Like, he was talking to the players, and everyone's just like, dude, like, this is not working. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's the rundown. Anybody have anything for the after show? After show? Got Canelo versus... Uh, Triple G this Triple weekend G. in Vegas. How do you fucking say his name? Gavorni Gavetko. You just say Triple Gennady G. Gennady Golovkin, yeah. Um, yeah, and that can be bought on Dazzin Boxing. And DAZN. I believe DAZN. 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 Um, it's, it's spelled <laughs> like <laughs> Dazzin. <laughs> Touch them all. Um, Touch them all, White Sox. Ed's thing. never you, mispronounced you, anything. Well? Ever. <laughs> but would you, would you agree that you're not... Your peak form. If today. this is a, if you not. what's your okay. pitching line today? If you were a starting pitcher, how many innings? How uh, many hits? How many runs? Three and a third. It'd be at worst uh, a a qual or a, what's the fuck? yeah bad brain day <laughs> a uh, fucking no. I'm just gonna say complete game shutout. <laughs> that's what you would say today because that's how your brain's going. Mm -hmm. But uh, quality start. Yeah, I. That's what I, was I used for. to be, be a big Canelo guy, but I will say that the first two fights of this left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth because I don't think that he deserved uh, the win. And there is another one where, at your garage mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. he had the draw and it was like he he clearly lost. Clearly. Lost. Yeah. And so, the draw? yeah. Yeah. Like the one that was a draw. Yeah, I thought mm -hmm. you know, I thought, I thought Triple G won. Right. And that was when Triple G was on top. And now he's like a little older. Canelo's it was Canelo like eight, nine years younger than him. So it's a weird trilogy where yeah. it's like a win, a tie, and like usually it's one one. Right. And and it and it probably should be one oh one the other way. Like you could say the one that Canelo won maybe should have been a draw too. Do you think I thought he won that one. I thought Canelo won the okay. second one. All right. So then yeah, but yeah, so it'll be interesting to see and this is 
it's a trilogy, so this has to be. And could all just lost a bibble, so yeah. So uh, I, but, but regardless, I watch the fight on yeah. his own. Rough and Rowdy Crew is going to be calling it. Both of those guys have like that knockout power for that weight class. So anytime like someone is genuinely in danger, boxing's great. Yeah, and, though, and that's always a threat with those two. Still, like my favorite knockout in the last ten years uh, was Canelo, who was who was the little British guy, Ricky uh, Hatton. No, no, no. He had that like was, uh, uh, he had. Um, he like he threw a hook and Canelo caught him and then like the guy died. He was he you loved him super fast glass jaw. Mark oh Amir Khan. Amir Khan. Amir Khan. Amir Khan. Yeah, Khan. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So mm -hmm. like Canelo can, can Canelo can knock you out. Mm -hmm. So that'll be. I mean anybody worth could knock out Khan. I just liked him because he had the fucking fastest hands I've yeah. ever seen. But I thought you were talking about Ricky Hatton and no. Pacquiao and that he that ended his career. Yeah. That Pacquiao Hatton fight. Mm -hmm. He never was the same. He he was like in rehab and shit for. Ever after that, he slipped into addiction and shit. That's knockout power for you. But um, I'm always up for a good a good boxing match. Yeah, you getting well, together right. with the boys, Ed? What do you say? You getting together with the boys? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably order the fight. With you know, friends. How I've probably spent, I'd say upwards of 500 bucks this year on, on mixed martial arts pay per views, and they're always outstanding. Yeah, I'm doing an interview with UFC next week. Actually, nice. they they reach out to me and I'm like. A full disclosure, like I just started watching UFC this year. I don't know the first thing I'm talking about with this sport, other than like it's awesome when I watch it. Yeah. So if you guys want that, cool. like here yeah. I am. But yeah. Okay. Um, all right then. That's the rundown. Go check out uh, Redline Radio Dog Walk starting nine on the guest list. Day Port on show. What's yeah, a lot of stuff, dude. Yeah. yeah, you say that, and then it's like, wow, that is a lot. That's a roster of stuff coming mm -hmm. up. Anything else? Anything else, fellas? Nope. All right, that's it. Uh, we'll be back next Wednesday. The rundown will be back tomorrow. See you then.